this is mercury thiocyanate. It is a white, highly toxic mercury salt. When lit up, it reveals an interesting property. It produces a snake that can't kill you without having to bite you. The chemicals needed for this are quite simple. 27.2 grams of highly toxic mercury chloride and 16 grams of ammonium thiocyanate. We then started off by adding the mercury chloride to the beaker. We made sure to go as slow as possible because spilling any mercury chloride would be a disaster. Now that the mercury chloride is in the beaker, we need to dissolve it. Therefore, distilled water was added. The final product would be poorly soluble anyways, therefore you can't overshoot by adding more distilled water. To speed up the dissolving process, we added the stirfish for stirring. The magnetic stirrer was turned on and I had to wait about an entire day until all of the mercury chloride had dissolved. If we used the hot plate, we could have dissolved it much faster, but I decided to stick to the magnetic stirrer because I had time. Once fully dissolved, we went to the next step. We have to prepare a solution of ammonium thiocyanate. Ammonium thiocyanate is highly soluble in water and therefore we won't have the same problem as with mercury chloride. I spilled some, but fortunately it's not very toxic. Now we are going to combine both the solutions. I expected mercury thiocyanate to immediately crash out of solution because of its poor solubility. But this didn't happen and the solution stayed clear at first. Anyways, this doesn't matter, let's come to the reaction. Mercury chloride reacts with ammonium thiocyanate to form mercury thiocyanate and ammonium chloride. After some time, the mercury thiocyanate fortunately decided to crash out. The magnetic stirrer was turned off and fortunately mercury thiocyanate quickly settled down. Mercury thiocyanate is a white fluffy powder. The next step is going to be to separate it from the liquid. As the powder is really coarse and I don't want to contaminate my vacuum filtration setup, a gravity filtration should suffice. Excess liquid was decanted off first before adding a filter to the funnel and filtering off the solids. To ensure no mercury thiocyanate is left behind, the beaker was rinsed using distilled water while holding it at an angle. We're now left with a damp mass. This was placed into a plastic tray alongside a cup filled with anhydrous calcium chloride to act as a drying agent. Out of laziness, I would always prefer a vacuum desiccator over a normal desiccator. Therefore, the vacuum pump was switched on, the chamber was opened and we evacuated it. It took only three days in the vacuum chamber until it was completely dry. Now we are left with white, fluffy and highly toxic powder. We ended up with 8.9 grams, which is an unprecedented yield of 28%. My guess is that we ended up with this low yield because the ammonium thiocyanates probably contained a lot of water. Anyways, this is not going to matter because I will recover the mercury from the waste and therefore it's not a loss. When we light the mercury thiocyanate on fire, these beautiful snakes appear. Mercury thiocyanate decomposes to form carbon nitride, HG vapors, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and carbon nitride further decomposes to form deadly dicyan gas. I was a little disappointed with the first mercury snake, so we tried another one. This time we are going to use more mercury thiocyanate than the last time. Again, it unfortunately didn't work out as expected. For a future video, I'm going to press leftover mercury thiocyanate into a tablet sized shape and I hope it makes better snakes, so make sure to subscribe for that. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, make sure to drop me a like and make sure to subscribe in order not to miss out on future videos like this. A special thanks goes out to all of my patrons. You make it possible for me to film even more awesome stuff. 
I really appreciate your support.